is the Edmonton real estate market going to crash? Well, this seems to be what everybody's trying to figure out right now. We've seen headlines coming out of both Toronto and Vancouver where things have slowed down a lot. You've seen prices already drop in some instances. I'm certainly not an expert in those markets, but I can read the headlines and see what's happening over there. And that's one of the things that gets the most attention because those are the biggest markets in Canada. And I think it's normal for people to wonder if the same thing could happen in Edmonton and in the Edmonton housing market. So that's the question I'm going to be exploring at least in this video is basically, is the Edmonton uh, real estate market going to crash? Is it already crashing? And I'm also gonna explore some other questions around that that will hopefully be helpful to you in navigating buying or selling a home in the Edmonton real estate market. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so one of the first points that I wanted to make is that nobody has a crystal ball and knowing whether or not the market is gonna crash is a little bit more complicated uh, than I think we'd like to admit. Obviously, you've got different levels of education uh, that go into this and how much people have really looked at the market to see what's going on. Um, and I can only really speak from being a realtor in Edmonton, working in the business day to day, looking at the statistics on what I see happening in the real estate market, and then just essentially spotting the trends and seeing where it's going. But that can also change relatively quickly uh, if we have big changes like what we've seen in interest rates. So it's sort of an always evolving, always changing thing. What's relevant, you know, a couple months ago might seem completely different now uh, we had super hot months in both uh, February and March and then things slowed down a little bit in April but we still had some price gains and then it certainly looks like things have slowed down more in May but that doesn't mean that the market is crashing and I do come across a lot of people that are sort of expecting prices to drop in Edmonton. And while that's certainly a possibility, I don't think it's as obvious as an answer as it might be in some other markets like Vancouver or Toronto. One of the points that I wanna make around that is that it's not necessarily easy or straightforward to predict uh, what's gonna happen in the market. So I'm looking at kind of like what's happening right now, what I'm seeing, and then hopefully that'll help you in making certain decisions like if you should buy now or if you should wait to potentially see if prices should drop and how depending on whether you're buying or selling and what you're buying or selling like even the types of properties is going to have uh, an impact on what the market is like there so let's explore a few more questions here first off has the market shifted it definitely has uh, and i've got some stats that i'll share with you here shortly we, like I said, had a crazy month in February and March, and then it was still pretty hot in April. It's still pretty hot now. I'm basically going to be sharing some stats with you from what's been happening just in the last 30 days. I took these stats yesterday on uh, May 27th, just looking back 30 days. So it's, it's mostly the month of May, uh, but we'll have a little bit of the end of April in there. And um, there's always a few sales that are missing that come in later. So. You could almost look at this as a May update on what happened in the market, um, but I'm just kind of pulling live stats. So first off, the market has shifted, but it has not crashed, and it's certainly not fair to say that the market has crashed and that prices are dropping in Edmonton, because uh, that's just not the case at this time. So let's look first at detached homes. So that's single family detached homes. We're gonna look at that segment of the market first. So as of yesterday, there was 2,407 active single family homes uh, on the Edmonton MLS. And in the last 30 days, there had been 1,090 sales. With this, I'm just gonna do a quick calculation to basically calculate how many months of inventory there are and the flip side of that is the absorption rate. So with that number of active listings and that number of sales, we're sitting at 2.2 months of inventory or 45.3% uh, absorption rate. That puts us into a balanced market territory. So in February and March, we had a pretty strong seller's market uh, where it was very intense there for a while. And then things eased up a little bit in April. And then what I'm seeing so far for the stats for May for single family detached homes is that sitting at that you know 45% absorption rate that actually puts us into a balanced market. So uh, it is a pretty big shift again, 
but it's not the type of shift that typically would translate into reduced prices. Going from a seller's market where you're gonna have more upward pressure on prices to a balanced market, that kind of puts you in a situation where you're not gonna see a bunch of upward pressure on prices, but it's still balanced, so you're not going to see you know, prices dropping like a rock. Uh, it is still pretty fascinating to see how, how quickly it shifted, especially since we've shifted a couple times now. Like we shifted in, if going from January to February, it went from probably a balanced market to a seller's market relatively quickly, and then a very strong seller's market. And then now we've had interest rates go up and a few other things happen, and now all of a sudden we're shifting back into a balanced market in a relatively short period of time. And that's essentially been caused by two things. We've had more inventory coming on the market, so we've got a lot more listings than we had before, while simultaneously our sales volume has dropped. And that's sort of what over time will affect the balance of the market, because if you've got a lot of sales happening and not a lot of inventory, then it's very tight, and that's essentially a seller's market. When it's more balanced, you've got a good balance between listings and sales. So you're not gonna see crazy price swings in either direction. It just takes a lot of the stress out of the market, especially if you're a buyer. So that's a big shift from last month and, and the month before. And it's gonna be interesting to see kind of what happens as we go forward on if this continues to shift. But as of right now, we're not gonna see prices drop for single family homes. There's still a lot of demand out there. The nice properties do tend to sell very quickly, especially if they're priced right. But because the market shifted, if you were thinking about selling a detached home, you really have to make sure you price it right now because it's not in an escalating market like it was before. Maybe some segments you'll see that where you, you'll still get multiple offers. I'm still competing on a lot of houses uh, that I'm writing offers on for my buyers. But instead of having you know potentially 10 other offers, maybe there's only two or three other offers now. So it's really taken the insanity out of the market. It's actually been a little bit nice having a little bit of a breather there and not uh, having to have as much fear as a buyer that, oh, if I don't get in right now, you know, prices are gonna keep going up. From my perspective, it's been a bit of a welcome shift in the detached home market, especially when working with buyers. Obviously, if you're a seller and you were hoping to get uh, more money for your house. Something you might want to consider is since a lot of steam has been taken out of the seller's market and it's switched to a more balanced market, that might mean that we're going to see the highs for the year right around now, essentially. Since we're, since we're not no longer in a, in a seller's market for detached homes, you shouldn't be expecting prices to continue to escalate, at least in the short term. Obviously, this can shift again, but typically it is in the spring months when we have the most activity. And since we're now with less sales than we had last month and, and the month before, uh, at least so far for the month, you're just not gonna see as much up, upward pressure on prices as you did before. So if you were thinking about selling your detached home, some people I know were holding out, waiting to you know kind of ride the wave, wait till prices go up as much as possible and then list your property. If you're one of those people and you're not buying another house, it might make sense to list it now because we are definitely in a, a market shifting situation. So it's possible you might get the most money for your house if you sell it right now. If you're buying another house or another property, it's not as straightforward of, of an answer on if you should make the move now or if you should do it later, uh, because it depends what you're buying. If you're buying another detached home, again, it might make sense to buy now for, for reasons that you might not have thought of. Number one, you might get more for your property. Number two is if you have a rate hold, if, you, if you're pre-qualified for another mortgage, interest rates are going up. So if you have a good rate hold, that gives you an incentive to buy a house now instead of waiting and potentially getting a higher interest rate. So it's not just that straightforward, oh, if prices are lower or higher, how much you're gonna be paying on your mortgage makes a big impact. And I'd definitely recommend looking at that if you're kind of in that camp where you're wondering, oh, okay, should we buy now or should we wait to see if prices drop and then buy then? Because I've done a few calculations and, I, and I'm willing to do this uh, for you and your kind of price point if you're considering making a move right now, is okay, so what, what does your mortgage payment look like if you have 4% interest on a mortgage versus five or five and a half percent interest? And then seeing at what price those two numbers would be pretty similar. So I don't have an example for you right now, but uh, you can basically go into a mortgage calculator and you could say, okay, let's say you were looking at buying a $400,000 house, you could put in there a mortgage at 4% interest or just over 4%. And then you could also see what that same mortgage payment would be if you put it at uh, 5% or 5.5%. Obviously it's gonna be more, as you can start to look at is like how much would prices have to drop 
for my mortgage payment at 5% or 5.5% to be the same as if prices stayed the same right now, but I paid 4% on my mortgage. And you might be surprised by how much the, your mortgage payment escalates by going up a percent on, on your interest payments. So that starts to make it so it's not necessarily quite as obvious as, as you might have wanted it to be on whether it makes sense to buy now with uh, what the interest rates are today or buy later, assuming prices might drop, but interest rates might be higher. It might actually be more affordable to pay more now, but with a lower interest rate uh, with how it plays out with the mortgage. So I know there's a few people I've talked to recently where after they did some of those calculations, they decided, you know what, it actually still makes sense to buy now, even if prices do drop a bit because I've got a good rate hold, especially for the people that had good rate holds. If you had something at like 3% or even 3.5% versus being able to get I think now you can get like 4.04, it might have even gone up a little bit more. It does start to make that, that decision a little bit easier sometimes, uh, depending on your situation. So definitely we consider doing that if you're looking at detached homes uh, or, or even other segments of the market. So let's, I know I spent a lot, went on a bit of a tangent there with the detached homes, but let's look at uh, duplexes and row houses. So this is including half duplexes, side-by-side -side duplexes, and then what we call residential attached, which is basically, it's still single family ownership structure so you don't have a condo fee but it's a lot like a townhouse so the, there's not a ton of these and that's kind of how come I kind of bunched them all together half duplexes and, and residential attached because it's still a single family ownership structure but you don't have condo fees uh, and this is sort of a different market than the, the single family detached homes so as of yesterday there was 415 active listings and there had been 219 sales in the last 30 days. So this is actually a bit of a different picture for detached homes because this, in this market, we've got 1.89 months of inventory and about a 52.8% absorption rate. So that does actually put duplexes and, and row houses in a seller's market territory still, but it's a weak seller's market. It's just kind of barely uh, over that threshold of being in a seller's market, uh, being over 50% absorption rate. And this it has shifted. It used to be a stronger seller's market, uh, but you can see that just comparing this to single family detached homes, it's still a little bit tighter there uh, than what you're seeing in the detached home market. So there's still a little bit of upward pressure on prices in that category, but it's not super crazy. It's like I said, it's a weak seller's market. Now, if we look at the next market segment, I wanna look at townhouse condos. And for townhouse condos, it's townhouses, but they're condominiumized. So this is a decent se segment. There was 460 active listings as of yesterday, and there'd been 204 sales in the last 30 days. So that puts us at 2.25 months of inventory or 44.3% absorption rate. And that again, just drops us just out of a seller's market into a balanced market. This used to be a seller's market before, and now it has also shifted into a balanced market, just like detached homes. So there's still a lot of demand there. Don't get your hopes up that prices will just drop kind of overnight. Uh, there's still a lot of demand there, but it is getting more balanced than it was before. Uh, so again, if you're looking at maybe selling a townhouse, especially if you're not buying another one, I'd probably suggest listing now uh, while we're still in the spring and before interest rates go up more because it could start to shift. Now, if we look at apartment condos, apartment condos is a much different picture than what we've, we're seeing for all the other market segments. Uh, so as of yesterday, there was 1,715 active apartment condos in Edmonton and there had been 309 sales in the last 30 days. So that puts us at 5.55 months of inventory or an 18% absorption rate. And that puts us pretty far into a buyer's market. So there was a brief period of time uh, going from February and, and March, I think is where it peaked, where it, that, that market had shifted a lot and it had moved into a balanced market for apartment condos, but it's fallen back out of that and back into a buyer's market territory, which should be pretty familiar uh, with anybody that's uh, owned a, an apartment condo or been keeping an eye on that market for several years. It's been buyer's market territory for a long time. And it just looked like it was fighting its way out of a buyer's market into a balanced market. And now that's, that trend is reversed again and it's back into a buyer's market. And this is pretty obvious uh, if you're trying to sell an apartment condo. Likely, if you're in a bigger building, there's a lot of other listings in there. There's not a whole lot of sales happening on a monthly basis, like with 5.55 months of inventory, just to kind of explain what that months of inventory thing means. That's basically telling you how long it would take to sell all the houses or all the condos if no new listings came on the market and the rate of sales uh, continued at the same pace. So. 
you know, with 1,700, uh, over 1,700 active listings and only 309 sales in the last month, it would take quite a while, even if we had no new apartment condos, just to get through all of those, like, you know, five and a half months versus 2.25 months for townhouses or 2.2 for detached homes or less than two for duplexes. So those markets are all completely different, uh, but apartment condos are the ones that are in the most buyer's market territory for sure. So uh, if you're selling an apartment condo, it is not the time for wishful thinking. Uh, it, you're still in a situation where prices could be dropping for apartment condos. So in most cases, you've got to be the best value option in that building. Uh, otherwise, you're just not going to sell it and you're wasting your time. I see a lot of apartment condos that are overpriced. People put them up on the MLS because that's, you know, that's what they paid for it or they want to make a profit on what they bought it for. But for the most part, if you're not, you got to be priced right. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time completely. So. Uh, it's a good time to buy an apartment condo. You're still getting a way better deal than what people have gotten in a long time. Of course, if the market doesn't shift again, nobody really likes to buy into a market where, you know, prices have been dropping for several years. You know, are they gonna keep dropping, that kind of thing. That's something that's on everyone's mind, especially if they bought an apartment condo and now they feel like they've lost money. It still could be better than renting though. Like, so that, that is also something to consider. If you're, you're renting an apartment right now, and you want to get into the housing market, apartment condos are typically going to be your lowest barrier to entry. And I think it could be worthwhile doing some calculations too to see, okay, how much money are you spending every year on your rent? And if you bought a condo based on, you know, whatever you can afford and looking at what would your mortgage payment be? How much would you be spending with that? Plus your condo fee and kind of compare the two. A lot of people do tend to get something nicer than what they were renting, uh, so that also plays into it. But even if you you buy a condo and it goes down a little bit in value, you might end up still saving money compared to uh, have been renting for all that time, especially if you look at it over a period of years. Uh, you're, you're paying down your mortgage, so even if you bought a place for you know 180,000 and then it's worth 170,000 later, and if that's over a period of years, you've had time to pay your mortgage uh, balance down. So even though you're not necessarily gaining when it comes time to sell the property in terms of what you bought it for and what you sold it for. Just by switching from renting to owning uh, and paying down that mortgage, you might still end up with more money in your pocket. So obviously there's a lot of factors that come into that depending on like exactly how much you were renting, what type of mortgage and mortgage rate that you got and how much values have shifted. So there's a, there's a whole bunch of things that are gonna affect that calculation. But uh, a lot of people kind of get psychologically attached just to whatever the purchase price of their property is and then they, they always want it to be higher. If it's less than what they paid for it, then they feel like they lost money. But if you compare that to renting, you might not have lost money. So just something to think about. So that's sort of what we're seeing in each of the, the, those four markets right now. There's a few other questions I wanted to cover. Is the market crashing in Edmonton right now? Well, it, it has not crashed. Things move a little bit slower than that. And so that kind of brings the question is why does it take time for these things to play out in the real estate market? Why doesn't it move as quickly as stocks? Well, it, it is just a much slower moving market than what you see in stocks. Like a lot of stocks have dropped very quickly, but in real estate, it takes time. You've got to see how the market shifts between the number of active listings and how many homes are selling. And that's kind of the key thing to look at is the inventory of homes and it, you know, is it a seller's market or a buyer's market? Cause that tells you which direction is it, is it going in. It's, it's shifted for the most part from a seller's market to a balanced market. We're not in buyer's market territory for everything except apartment condos, but we could end up in that territory if this trend continues. That, you know, interest rates are gonna go up again here probably in June uh, and they're planning to go up more later. So how the market reacts to those increases is what ends up affecting if we're going into more of a buyer's market essentially. With that said, sellers are also pretty stubborn. So they don't just drop their prices quickly. It's the exact opposite of quick. It it's, gets slowly eaten away at. So even if we went into a buyer's market, it's not like all the sellers all of a sudden are like, oh no, it's a buyer's market and they just drop their price 20, 30, $40,000. It's very incremental. Uh, it gets kind of chipped away at, you know, a buyer comes along and 
you know, there's one buyer in 10 houses kind of thing. And the owner that's willing to give the best deal is the one that that buyer kind of goes with essentially if we're oversimplifying it a little bit, and he might get it a little bit cheaper than what all the other ones were at before, and then that becomes one of the new comparables, and the next buyer that comes along, he he might pay, he might be willing to pay the same amount that guy did for a house, because that's the new sold comp. Or maybe it's just chipped away at a little bit more. So it's a very slow process over time that causes uh, prices uh, to, to go down in real estate. It doesn't happen overnight. So if you're kind of sitting in the sidelines hoping that prices are just gonna drop like 30, 40, 50K, and you can swoop in in a month or two. I doubt you're gonna see it move that quickly. I do think the market could continue to shift and it could be uh, better uh, prices maybe in the late summer or fall, but I don't think it's gonna be extreme, at least not in our market from what I'm seeing right now. Obviously, how quickly the market reacts to the changes in interest rates is gonna have a big impact on that. One of the points I wanna get across is it does not change super fast. It happens over a period of like two or three months, we can have like a big shift kind of thing. So uh, you might still consider that fast, uh, but at that same time, if prices go down in, in three months or six months or whatever, how much did interest rates go up in that time too? And are you really saving money if, if your interest rates went up quite a bit? So it's not a simple decision. <laughs> and, and, I, and, and, and maybe you're looking for a simple yes or no, should you buy now or not? Uh, but I wanna try to give you a lot of the different factors to consider. And if you're buying another property too, it's not as straightforward either. So like if you're thinking about selling your property and buying another one, if you've got a rate hold, it probably still makes sense to do it now. Because otherwise you could wait, the value of your property might go down, but you might pay a higher interest rate on the property that you purchased. So then it might not necessarily be better than just doing it now. So obviously your situation is gonna be more unique. So I'd recommend reaching out to me and then I could give you a little bit more specific guidance uh, based on your situation, if you're buying or selling and what you're buying or selling. Uh, you can reach out to me at 780-819-5508. Uh, or you can email me at trevor at trevortardif.com or go to booktrevornow.com, select the time on my calendar, and then I will call you. So I've told you what's going on in the market right now in different segments. We've talked a little bit about how it's different, whether you're buying or selling, and whether it's a buyer's or seller's market in each one of those market segments. And then I've also given you some of my thoughts on whether it's, it's better to buy now or wait. Uh, to see if market values go down. So what should we expect moving forward? So one of the things that I think you should expect moving forward is that the market is going to continue to shift. There is a lot of uncertainty right now. I do think there's a lot of people on the sidelines kind of waiting to see what happens. And that can also end up being increased demand in the future as well. So when people are uncertain, they tend to hold off on their plans. Uh, to buy, but I wouldn't be surprised if you know a few months go by and the market's still stable and prices haven't dropped. I wouldn't be surprised if, if people that uh, were kind of hoping that it dropped get impatient and decide to come buy anyway. So there's a lot of factors that kind of play into it. It's not, it's not very straightforward. I hope that this video has been valuable and it wasn't just a big, long, rambling uh, thing about the market. Uh, I'd love to talk to you so you can reach out to me. Uh, I'm just about at 500 subscribers when I film this is at 498 so thank everybody I'd like to thank everybody for supporting me all those little thumbs ups and every time I get a new subscriber it's been motivating to let me know that you guys are finding these videos helpful so, so I'm sure somebody can help push me over that 500 subscriber amount and then then, then the next goal is going to be a thousand subscribers and there's something new that I would actually like to do is I'd like to start interviewing people doing video interviews uh, for my channel uh, and I wanna interview you if you've either just bought or sold a property. I think there's some key decisions that every buyer and seller has to make, and there's a bunch of them. Like, which, how did you pick an area? How did you decide, you know, what price point? Or if you're getting a detached home, or there's, a, so, there's so many questions around that, like, including like what type of financing you went with and why. Uh, and I, I have a feeling people don't only want to hear from me and if you could hear from each other and how you made some of those decisions, I think that could be valuable to other people. So I want to experiment with interviewing people on video and then putting some interview uh, based content out there. So if you've either are in the process of buying a home, I could interview you or if you just bought or sold a home, I could interview you as well. So if you might be up for that, let me know, reach out to me and uh, maybe we could set up an interview and uh, help other people learn from your experience. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, if you click over here, you can uh, subscribe. And if you click over here, 
uh, you can check out a playlist with some other market update videos. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.